today, you know, if you learn uh, how to garden from master gardeners, and it's mainly about chemicals. You know, what uh, chemical nutrients you need to put into the soil so you can grow some crops, and then which pesticides to use, you know, to kill the bugs, which pesticides to kill the weeds. And, and so it's, a, it's really insidious. So we're, we're facing an ecological disaster, and what well, with the increased in the period of, of, of climate change, um, we need to, it, what we need to do is real simple, we just need to change everything right now. We toured this insect farm in Southern California to learn how they are growing insects, which can be used to combat pests instead of using harmful pesticides. Looking at the ecological perspective on, um, instead of uh, killing these pests and the disease, why don't we grow healthy citra? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> duh, you know? Though, so, just like any other livestock operation, um, except we've got uh, millions and millions of, of insects and they got got six legs instead of two or four legs. I'm a bug farmer. <laughs> That's my role. So we grow a short list of, of beneficial insects, uh, flies, adult flies, um, uh, three species of fly parasites, a little ladybug that eats scale, and lace wing which is a, a general predator. The uh, coolest thing in this room right now is this dinger right here. So back before uh, digital microscopes and cameras that fit right on your phone, you would need a way to take a picture of your sample. So that's where this comes in. Yeah, so what you're seeing is it's going in right now. And it looked like it had its abdomen down for quite a while after the second sting that it did. So, then it uh, gets done and it just kind of walks around there and does some host guarding for a while. Doesn't really get off it for 15 minutes, but that's what it looks like. So, so we like to add more life instead of killing things, is the, the basic concept. Uh, uh, I mean, regenerative agriculture is the term is really trending all across the world, actually. and. You can tell when there's enough biodiversity, just every, everything starts working. You see more and more uh, liveliness in all the ecosystem, and then, and then you see roots going deeper, the soil penetrometer goes down further, and your soil tests come back with more carbon. Yep. It's a muggy, mud world out there, so let's go with it. First, we were shown a room of gourds, which are used to grow scale insects that are then used to farm beetles that eat those scale insects. So, here at the insectary, we, we produce two different uh, beneficial insects. But Rhizobius itself was introduced into California in uh, 1892, so that gives you an idea of how old biocontrol is. So, I'll show you what we got going on. So, you see around you a lot of rotting squash. These squash are about a year and a half old. They're actually from another insectary. So, uh, Lindorus, if you're wondering who he is, it's the little, little beetles. Oh, I got one right here. That little guy. But yeah, so uh, the beetles can be introduced onto orchards. I've released these on orchards down in San Diego County a couple of times because we have an orchard that has a lot of imbalance right now. But most of our Lindorus are going out to uh, landscapers. We then took a walk to see what it takes to grow a parasitic wasp that infects flies. These wasps help ranchers deal with fly infestations. So, our second product that we're breeding here is a parasite on flies. So, to produce a parasite, you have to start off with your host. So, that means that we have a room full of flies. Ta da!
So, how it works. What are we doing in here? So, we have the adult flies, and we have these containers, the jars with the cotton around them. So, the flies are actually getting impregnated, and the eggs are hatching in them, and when they land, they just spit out a bunch of larvae. So when they spit out those larvae, they'll land on here, spit them out, and then that's how we can get keep our culture going and take the uh, little larvae from these cups into the next room and then proliferate them into uh, the pupa form. Se le pone en la mañana leche de polvo. Ahorita te la voy a enseñar. Mm. Okay. Deja traer. Sí, that's it. Las fechas que están poniendo huevos son una, dos, tres. Ahorita les voy a enseñar el huevo de la mosca que hoy puse para que nazca el gusano. ¿Sí? Ahí no lo tengo. Aquí tenemos un insecto que se llama MZ. Este insecto este, trabaja picando la pupa que estaba allá. La traemos para acá y la ponemos en estas gavetas. Are those the wasps? Sí, ajá. Él trabaja picando lo que es esto. Lo pica y de ahí nace otra vez el, el insecto. Mm. And also, uh, the thing is, when they're stinging them, they'll do a testing, and sometimes the testing just kills it. It's not laying eggs, though. Oh, so they'll sting one, go to the next one, and then decide that's the host that they want. Mm -hmm. Insecto de M M Z. Contamination happening. El MR tiene que ser cuando él nace es muy pequeño, muy pequeño para eso una hormiga chiquita. Turify years born a year. A trabajar Chris. A trabajar el equipo. Wow. Yeah, I feel like butterflies and beetles get all the dang credit. It's like, oh, their butterflies are the most diverse. You know, beetles are the most diverse. And no, it's because people see a beetle and they're like, huh, beetle, I want to name that. Ooh, butterfly, pretty, I want to name that. But no one wants to name the parasites. 